From CITI Program, I'm Darren Gaddis, and this is On Campus. Today, what is data management and why is it important in research? Common mistakes to avoid with data management and modern challenges for data management. I spoke with Mariette Marsh, Assistant Vice President, Regulatory Affairs and Safety at the University of Arizona. She has oversight of the IRB, IACUC, HIPAA Privacy Program, Quality Program, Embryonic Stem Cell Research Oversight Committee, Radiation Laboratory Safety Services, and Occupational Health. With over 20 years of experience in higher education administration, Mariette has a skill set that focuses on research ethics, flexible application of regulatory requirements, and organizational improvement. As a reminder, this podcast is for educational purposes only. It is not intended to provide legal advice or guidance. You should consult with your organization's attorneys if you have questions or concerns about relevant laws and regulations discussed in this podcast. Additionally, the views expressed in this podcast are solely those of the presenter and do not represent the views of their employer. Hi, Marriott. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, how are you? To get us started, what is data management and why is it important within research? Data management overall is becoming an area of increased oversight and scrutiny by our federal regulators, as well as institutions and organizations because of all of the data breaches, all of the uh, phishing emails, because of everything that's happened um, in our technological world, there is increased concern about how we protect data that we collect for research projects, what we do with it, and how we share it. And so data management requirements are just going to continue to increase as we see this activity make its way in the form of regulation that institutions will have to adhere to. And when it comes to research, is the process of data management necessary to disclose to an IRB board when starting a new project? The data management process really needs to be thought of at the beginning when you are developing your proposal. And that's because Several of our federal agencies have come out with data requirements to complete data management plans upon submission of the proposal for funding. And then in addition to that, when you submit an IRB protocol, the IRB is required to ensure privacy and confidentiality of data as appropriate for your specific research project. And so IRBs are going to start requesting to see those data management plans as you plan the project. And they, for many years, have already required that you disclose to the IRB how you're protecting it, what you're doing with it, so that the IRB can ensure that the privacy and confidentiality of the information meets the approval criteria for the IRB. And from your experience, what are some common mistakes you have seen researchers make when it comes to data management? Underestimating the volume of data that they have in terms of storage space as well as a comprehensive plan to organize and access the data. We know that systems change over time. My VCR recording is, you know, old recordings no longer can even be played because we don't have a VCR. Well, the same happens with data and data management. So many times I, I find that researchers are not thinking forward enough in terms of how they are going to share and store their data. And a recommendation is to reach out to your local librarian at your institution. I have found that our librarians have remarkable knowledge and skill to help research teams think about future plans for the data that they collect. Another common mistake also, which is getting less and less, I think, is that we're not securing our data appropriately, meaning encrypting it both at rest and in transit. And, you know, password protected flash drive is no longer an acceptable means to store sensitive information. So making sure you're aware of your institution's data security policies is another area where I see mistakes made. How can someone ensure their research data is properly secured and managed? Being familiar with your institution's processes and policies, platforms, and secured resources, I know that you must have an information security office or officer or a data security office. There's likely institutional level policies that exist and that you should, one, be knowledgeable of, two, implement in your research project, and three, ensure that they're used across the board when you're sharing with other researchers. 
So, you know, ensuring that your data is properly secured and managed, it is like learning a different language. So if you are not familiar with what you need to do, you need to be reaching out to the appropriate entity at your institution or a consultant or another colleague who has experience in this area, because it is only going to get more requirement, more secure, more access at the same time. And there is a, is a balance between the access and the security is where institutions get concerned, specifically IRBs. With the evolution of blockchain, virtual research, artificial intelligence, and other technological advances, what are some modern challenges when it comes to data management? I hinted at it a little bit, and I think that is the ever-changing type of technology that exists. There are new startup companies with new platforms, with new sorts of research, access, and use. There's, you know, wearables that have additional data. There's all of these advances that, frankly, the regulations aren't keeping up. Regulations are usually five to 10 to 20 years behind what science is actually doing. And so those advances make it difficult for an institution like mine or yours, where you have pretty probably regimented processes in place about how we assess risk and how we look at data, that we are struggling equally to keep up with the type of changes in technology and advances. And so there's some, you know, disconnect, I think, between the regulatory bodies and the regulations and the research practices that are happening. Then when you add on to that, just the complexity and the skill of hackers and people trying to get access to our systems, not all institutions have the same level of support or the same level of security because there is a huge cost and a huge lift to that. And so what we are finding is that the challenge is, is we can't keep up with how fast science is moving in this area, that the regulations will forever be behind, that the institutional offices and programs don't necessarily have the expertise to be able to judge what you're doing appropriately. If we're thinking about, let's say, human research, well, what are the risks and benefits of artificial intelligence and how does that play out in the long term? We frankly don't know. And so we struggle, I think, equally as hard. So when you have a, a really wonderful research activity, but yet you are using this technology, such as virtual research, artificial intelligence, you know, and other advances that we have, be prepared to spend some time, one, educating, I think, your partners at the institution, as well as being open to engaging in dialogue about other ways or other things that may be equally successful for your research, maybe not utilizing the technology. Expect it to be a conversation and probably expect some pushback and expect some basic questions as the institutions and as the individuals gather really their own knowledge about it. What are some resources typically available on an institution's campus which support proper data management? I sure hope that wherever you know your research is done and your institution that you exist at, one has a policy. I find that the smaller institutions may not have a very robust policy than the larger institutions. But then again, at the larger institutions, I find that they're so disorganized and decentralized, they don't have the policy either. So one, have a policy and be familiar with that policy. Two, as I mentioned, there hopefully is an information security office or officer. Um, if, if you don't have that, I would reach out to your centralized IT infrastructure and ask where that is. Most institutions should have someone who is looking at their systems from a security perspective, from being hacked and accessed by parties that don't have access, authorized access. That could be a, a resource for you if you don't have someone available to you. If your institution doesn't have these resources, I certainly would recommend that you seek out a consultant in the community around you or through peers that you have in terms of other best practices. Recommend that we don't just download random programs and just try using those because they may not be approved or authorized by your institution, especially if you're dealing with something, for example, like protected health information or even personally identifiable information, PHI or PII. Those are things that we might need to have specific agreements in place with these third-party vendors that you might use. So in research projects, 
many times, again, the researcher has this plan, this research activity. They say, I'm going to need to store or access or create or use data, and they might have a third-party vendor. Those vendors may need to be vetted by your institution. So resources, ultimately, hopefully there's a training, a data security training, a security awareness training that you might have to take. Again, that is all based on institutional policy. Some states have specific state laws regarding requirements for data protections. So there may be a need to reach out to the Office of General Counsel. They certainly should be able to point you in the right direction. What else should we know? Data oversight, as I kind of started out, is just increasingly growing. And it's growing because of the changes in the regulations. It's growing because... We know that we have the capability to start crunching larger and larger data sets. There's value in combining these data sets so that we can learn more and more about health, about wellness, about social behavioral issues. There's all sorts of reasons why we want to share and use this data. Equally so, there's all sorts of reasons why bad actors want to access the data and want to get into our systems because of the data platforms that we have and the types of data that we have at our institutions. And so you have to be a knowledgeable consumer, just like anything. You have to read the end user license agreements. You have to do your due diligence when you're researching a vendor that you may want to use for your specific research project. Being a knowledgeable consumer not only of those sorts of third-party businesses, but of your own institutional policies and practices, will set you on the right foot. will set you, you know, your research project and reaching out early to the various programs and offices to talk to them. If you have a very complicated research project, reaching out early to the IRB, to the privacy office, to the general counsel office, to the information security program, whatever name that might hold at your specific institution will make your research more successful. It's all that pre-planning that ultimately will make it easy down the line. Because once you actually have the data and you put it somewhere, if you want to move it or change it or have collected it in a way that it's not searchable and usable, then the whole research activity really is kind of a moot point. And we would rather have you be successful at the beginning. From where I sit as an administrator of various programs, I'd rather you be successful at the outset. So let's talk early and let's talk often. That's the advice I would have. Mariette, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Be sure to follow, like, and subscribe to On Campus with CIGI Program to stay in the know. If you enjoy this podcast, you might be interested in CIGI Program's other podcasts on tech ethics and on research. You can listen to all of CIGI Program's podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other streaming services. I also invite you to review our content offerings regularly as we are continually adding new courses and webinars that may be of interest to you. All of our content is available to you anytime through organizational and individual subscriptions. You may also be interested in CITI Program's Data Management and Security for Student Researchers, an overview webinar. Please visit the CITI Program's website to learn more about all of our offerings.